Hello and welcome to my first tutorial. I will show you how to use QGIS to format data in order to run, eventually run a generalized linear model or generalized linear mixed model. The data that we're working with is GG19 tularemia data and it was collected in southern Georgia. The data I have spans from 2009 to 2011 and includes uh, capture dates in the spring and fall. The data includes locations and counts of known tularemia vectors. Uh, the objective of this project is to incorporate count data as well as species presence and species pseudo absences to model distributions of the different vector species given environmental variables. Um, and we will model these using the generalized linear models and the generalized linear mixed models. The resulting uh, beta coefficients can then be incorporated into the raster calculator and we can create a predictive surface and where you'd expect to find these species given the environmental variables and the count data. So to begin this tutorial, what we will first do is we'll import a CSV and convert it to a layer. Uh, the CSV contains known uh, tularemia vectors that include the lat long, uh, the species, the quantity, and the month and the year the sample was collected. So to begin, go to layer, add layer, and select add delimited text layer. Browse to the CSV. Hit open. And to spatially project these points, we need to define the X and Y. And the next, it'll ask the coordinate reference system. Uh, for this one in particular, it's WGS84, and it's a, a geographic coordinate system. You can type in 4326, and that's the authority ID. Double click WGS84, and here we have the points. Uh, spatially projected onto the map. For the purpose of this study, it's in two regions in southern Georgia. So you can just drag the uh, shape file into the layers panel and put it in order so you can make sure you can see the points inside the region. So what we want to do is we want to just focus on points that are found within this region. So the first thing we'll do is clip. I really a really nice feature in QGIS is you can search for the shape for the uh, tools. Uh, you can go to processing and toolbox. You have this nice uh, panel here that you can use to search for the different tools. So for this one, we'll use as a clip. So just type in clip. And we'll set the known uh, locations as the input layer. And you don't have to save it to a file. You can if you want. Um, we will do that later. But you just hit run. And if you want to move any layer, just right click, remove. And so here is all the data collected within our study region. And you notice in the bottom, and the coordinates, these are in decimal degrees. We'll eventually want to put these in UTMs, so we'll go ahead and do that now. The tool we use is Reproject Layer. You can type in Reproject. And set the clip layer that we just did. Um, and in Georgia, we use uh, WGS84 UTM Zone 38 North. I already have it on my recently used coordinates, but you can type in the ID, the authority ID, which is 32638. And you can see it's in the projected coordinate system. It's going to be in meters, and it's WGS84 UTM Zone 38 North. You can double click that, and now we'll save this to a file. So click the ellipses, save the file, navigate to where you want to save it. And I like to have input, output files within my working space. Uh, so for this one, I'll put it in the uh, outputs. So this will I'll title it vector UTM. 
you can run it with uh, or output after it's running. I don't really like to do that because it doesn't give it a good name. But just to demonstrate, we'll do that anyways. And see, it just re it named it as reprojected, which is very un uninformative. So I'll just remove all these. Now I can add my UTM reprojected coordinates. Okay. So now we can see the coordinates are still in decimal degrees. And that's because QGIS is not uh, set to that coordinate reference system that we, we uh, put the points in. So we'll have to manually do that. And the way you do that, you just click this little button down here. And since we recently used it, it's going to show up on our recently used coordinate reference systems. So just double click. Or highlight it and click OK. And you see that it moved. Well, that's because it's reprojected into the uh, projected coordinate system. So the next, the next thing we'll do is we need to have the presence locations as well as the absences. So what we have here essentially is all presence for each, each species. Now some species are going to be present multiple species will be present at one point or absent at one point. So what we'll do is we'll just have a layer of just basically trap locations. And to do this, you just duplicate, right click, duplicate. And it's a basic it's just a copy of what we had before. And what I'll do is I'll save it as a new shape file. Make sure that the drop down format is Esri shape file. And navigate to the output. And I'll, I'll format the uh, attribute table so later on things will make more sense. To do that, you right, I'm sorry, you right click, go to attribute table, and you'll have to, you have to start editing. The editing uh, function is the top left here is this little pencil. You can also alternatively do a shortcut control E. So now that we're start editing, we can start deleting some fields. Uh, this button here is to delete fields. Alternately, you can use Control L. And all you need to do is uh, click and drag. We'll keep the lat long on there and the uh, month and year. So click OK. And then to stop editing, you just re click the pencil and hit save. Since we have multiple species in our vector UTMs, we will need to uh, separate those species. There's a really nice tool called Split that we'll use to do that. We'll split vector layers. Our input layer will be the vector UTM, and we're going to split it by the unique field species. And instead of saving it as one shape file, it'll save it as a bunch of shape files because it's a shape file for each species. So we'll create a new folder in the outputs and I'll title it split. Highlight the folder, select folder, and then run. And you can see a new shape file was created for each species. And I'll put that on the map so we can see. So as you see, each species has its own point shape file. Now for the purpose of this tutorial, I don't want to have to do this for every single species, so we'll focus on one species. We'll do uh, M. socialis here. So we'll remove all the other ones. Okay. Move this vector. So you can see that there is uh, mostly M. socialis is only concentrated in the eastern portion of the distribution. However, there are other trap sites that did not encounter M. socialis. So what we want to do is create, create a way where we'll have presence data as well as count data. And the easiest way I found to do this is to create a grid and then join each point 
to the grid cells. So the first thing you do is type in grid in the search toolbox and you'll see create grid. We want them to have we want them to be polygons, so select rectangle. And the extent you can use it as the canvas. They're going to be a kilometer by kilometer and remember these are in meters, so we type in a thousand and thousand. And the coordinate system will be the ones we've been using recently. Here's a 38 north. then run and you see this is a big grid it's kind of monotonous but what we will do is we'll uh, join those to the trap locations and to do that just type in join in the toolbox and it'll be join attribute slot by location this is essentially a spatial join. The target will be the grid and the join vector will be the trap locations. We'll use the intersect. Um, we don't need any of the summary statistics. And we'll save it to the output. It's trap locations grid. get rid of the grid and here we have cells for where each trap location and the reason we did this is because there could be multiple uh, multiple vector species trapped in one area so we're going to define these as essentially the study sites and the way we way we uh, the way we incorporate multiple locations per study site is we will sum, take the sum of the of the quantities for the uh, for the captured species here. Um, the first thing we want to do is define our study areas because we don't have any unique IDs associated with the grid. So open the attribute table. And what we'll do is we'll add a field call it site ID and we can keep it at an integer and what you do is you do dollar sign ID plus one we'll do the plus one because it starts at zero we want it to start at one so each of these cells is going to be a unique site. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to do another spatial join, but instead this time we will join the uh, vector, the captured data, with the individual sites, and then we'll sum that. And we'll use the tool that will be under Vector, Analysis Tools, and points in polygon. So this will calculate the sum of the points within each polygon. The input will be the trap locations and then the uh, input vector data vector layer will be the M socialis. We'll use the quantity as the attribute to aggregate. Take the sum and we'll export it to our output. Okay, you can see now we have M socialis is associated with all trap sites. We go up with the attribute table. And you can see some of the quantities are null, but then some actually have a count. 
That's because the nulls will be essentially zeros since it was not encountered there. So we can do is just convert all the nulls to zeros by highlighting the row number, hold shift to select all of them, and then we'll do what we'll do the uh, field calculator, update this quantity s, and we'll just type in zero. So now you can see all the nulls are now zeros. Now this is actually the data that we really need. Um, it includes the year so that we can, we can extract our NDVI as well as a month. And we'll stop editing. So now we can, we can extract all this data and save it as a CSV. To do that, go to Save As. In the format, change it to CSV, comma separated value. Choose the output. Now you can navigate to the CSV. And here we have the resulting data. There's a few, a few fields that we really don't need. We can remove those. But everything we have is imperative for the next step, which would be the, to extract environmental covariates. Uh, for the purpose of my study will be to extract covariates from all species, but for the purpose of this tutorial, we're just going to focus on M. socialis. So in the next video, I'll show you how to actually extract environmental data using QGIS. And the following video after that, we'll actually run the analysis. Okay, thank you for watching.